Good morning. My name is Bohadar Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we're going to discuss about the vectors. We're going to define the vectors. We're going to discuss where we can apply the vectors. And also we're going to discuss how to do operations with the vectors geometrically and algebraically. So first of all, let's define what are the vectors. The, the vector is a mathematical quantity which comes with the two attributes, with the direction and the magnitude. So this is especially very useful in physics or in chemistry, where we would need to define some physical quantities, which has two attributes. For example, like the most popular example would be the force of gravity, which attracts all the objects on Earth towards the Earth. And usually the, the, the force is proportional to the mass of the object. What does it mean? It means that the higher the mass of a person or of an object, higher the length or higher the magnitude of this force. So we're going to define this force using a vector, which is going to show us the direction at which direction this force is applied, right? And as well as magnitude. So the magnitude of this vector is going to be the length of this vector. So probably this is not a good example because the direction doesn't change um, a lot. So let's look to the, another example of a force. So let's say you're playing a football and you would like to kick a ball in, into a certain location. So if you want to do this, then you need to define the direction and the magnitude of your kick, right? So it's really important in which direction you are kicking the ball and in which uh, magnitude, what is the force of your kick? So in order to denote your kick, it would be easier to denote this using a vector, which is going to show a direction and also the magnitude. So in this case, the length of the, magnet, the, the, length of the vector is going to be the magnitude of the vector. So the vectors are useful in linear algebra as well. We are going to use the vectors in order to construct the lines, planes, or the spaces, which are going to help us to figure out the solutions for the huge system of linear equations and also the matrix equations. So let's define how we're going to work with the vectors um, using the matrices in linear algebra. So any vector is going to be denoted using a, vac using a matrix with one color. So if it, we are given a vector in n-dimensional case, then the vector is going to have n components. So basically, if you are given a vector in 2D, so it is going to have two numbers, two components. So let's discuss how to define those components. So we are going to talk about the vectors on the rectangular coordinate system. So if you are given a rectangular coordinate system, a vector is going to be an arrow which connects the two points. So in this case, the starting point is A and ending point is B. So you see, so for every vector, we're having the starting point and the ending point. So on the rectangular coordinates, we are given one point A with the coordinates two and three, and we're given another point B with the coordinates seven and eight, and the vector which is started from the A and ended on the B is the vector on the rectangular coordinate system. So, well, it, it is, it, so it is interesting to know that you can move this vector to any position unless you're not changing the direction and the magnitude of the vector. So basically the magnitude of the vector is the length. We're going to discuss how to find the length of the vector later on. So basically this vector can be moved to here or to here or to here. So you can basically place the vector to anywhere you wish unless you're not changing the direction of the vector and its length. So you see, so this vector is really special vector because it starts from the origin, so zero, zero point. So any vector which starts from the origin is called a position vector. So the position vector starts from the origin. So in 2D, it has like a 0, 0, 0. In, in n-dimensional case, it, it is going to have n zeros, the originals, right? So we basically can do, can make any vector to be positioned vector, right? By just placing this into the origin. So let's talk about this later on. So now what I would like to talk with you is I would like to eliminate the background of the rectangular coordinate system. And I would like to talk with you how to do the operations with the vectors geometrically. So let's say you're given two vectors, u and v. And what you would like to do is you would like to add these two vectors. 
So obviously, if you add one vector into the another one with the same dimensionalities, you're going to have a third vector. And what is that vector? So it appears if you would like to add two vectors geometrically, what you need to do is you need to place the second vector to the end of the first vector. So previously we discussed that, hey, you can change the location of the vector unless you're not changing the direction and the magnitude of the vector. So well, basically we're putting the second vector to the end of the first one, and the resulting vector is going to be the connection of the uh, connection of the start of the first vector. So this is the start of the first vector and the ending point of the second vector. So this is going to be our resulting vector u plus v. So again, so just put the second vector to the end of the first one and connect the end the starting point and the ending point of these two vectors. And this is going to be u plus v. Well, how to subtract the vectors? So this is also important for us. So if you would like to subtract the two vectors, well, so I think we, we need to like use the same rule which we have just figured out, the addition rule, right? So in, the, in this case, I'm, I would like to rewrite these two vectors like u plus minus v. So instead of subtracting v from the u, I would like to add the u to the minus v, okay? So if you're given again u and v, if you would like to add two vectors, u and minus v, the first thing we should need to do is you need to construct the minus v vector. So fortunately, it is like, it's super easy to construct the minus v. You just need to draw a vector with the opposite direction to the v with the same magnitude, with the same length. Well, now we are given again two vectors and you know how to add them, right? So what we need to do is we need to replace the second vector to the ending point of the first vector. And then we need to connect the starting point of the first vector and the ending point of the second. Well, this is going to be the addition of the two vectors or subtraction of the two vectors at the same time, right? U minus V is going to be constructed like this. Well, obviously it makes, uh, it, it, pre like it requires for our, from us an extra job, right? So every time, if I would like to subtract two vectors, it appears I need to create another vector with the opposite direction, then add the two vectors. Oh, well, probably we need to figure out another more easier method. So let's say, it's a, I would like to pose the question whether it is possible to just have a U and V and figure out what is this black vector without constructing minus V. Well, yes, it appears it is possible. In order to do this, we need to replace both of the vectors to, this, to the same point. So basically, if you remember, whenever you add the two vectors, you need to replace the second vector to the ending point of the first vector, right? So if you would like to subtract, you need to put this to the starting point of the first vector. So you, we are going to put these two vectors from the same point. And the connection of the ending points is going to be their subtraction. So you see, so the, I, I'm, I'm just going to connect these two ending points and this is going to be U minus V. And you see that this is going to, this is the same vector as this one, right? So this two black vectors are the same. And if you remember, we said that, hey, if you are given a vector, you can just put this to any location without changing its, its, its length and the direction. And these two vectors are basically the same. So, well, instead of adding these two vectors, u and minus v, we can subtract the vectors, u minus v, by just putting both of the vectors to the same point and connecting their ending points. Well, the only question is how to define the direction of this resulting vector. Because previously it was clear, you need to connect the starting point of the first vector and ending point of the second vector, and the direction was clear. While now we are connecting two ending points. So why this vector is directing towards to this one, not to this one, right? So, you, well, you need to remember, uh, like a rule that this, the, this vector is always going from negative, from negative, to positive, from negative to positive. So while here you have negative V, right? So in this operation, U minus V. So minus V or V is a negative vector, okay? So that is why this vector is going from negative V to the positive V. So let me give you another example. So let's say you were given another T vector. So let's say this is omega and, uh, and this is V. 
So if you would like to subtract them, what you need to do is you need to connect the ending points, right? So let's connect the ending points. Okay, so now, depending on what kind of operation you're doing, you are going to define the direction of this vector. So if you are doing this like a V minus omega, then the direction of this vector should go from negative omega to the positive V, right? So in this direction, from negative omega to the positive V. So if you are doing this operation slightly different, for example, let's say uh, omega minus V, so omega minus V. So in this case, your vector is going from the negative V to the positive omega. Okay, so this is how we need to add and subtract the two vectors geometrically. And this is superbly important for us in lean algebra, where we're going to talk always about the matrices in order to construct the spaces. So later on, we're going to see that, hey, we're going to use these two operations, how to add the two vectors, how to subtract the two vectors, in order to create the spaces, the orthogonal spaces, and, 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 other, uh, and other, other spaces as well. So they are really important for us and we're going to use them throughout this course of linear algebra. Well, there is a third operation with the vectors, which is called like a, a multiplication of a vector to the constant. What it does geometrically is basically scales the vector. So if you are given a vector u, and if you would like to just have another vector with the same direction, but longer one and a half times, then you would just multiply this vector to a constant. So please know that this constant doesn't change the direction of the vector. So the direction is going to be always along this line through this vector. So basically, if you're given another vector, u, so if you would like to uh, make this vector smaller two times, what you would need to do is, you would just multiply the u to the one over two, right? We can multiply the vectors to any constant depending on what length of the vector I would like to adjust, okay? So this is like really super idea, but the basic idea. So we're going to use this idea also in order to talk about the so-called like unit vectors, normalization of the vectors and so on. So the scaling vector basically means just create, so just change the length of the vector without changing the direction. So the direction is going to be always the same, okay? Well, except one case. So if you are given a vector like V, then if you just multiply this as a negative two, for example, then minus two V is going to be a vector in the opposite direction to the V with the twice length, so with the twice length of the V, okay? So if you are multiplying a vector to the negative, is changing the direction opposite to that vector, but still these two vectors are along the same line. Okay, so the three operations are really important. So they are the fundamental operations over the vectors, and we've discussed how to do them geometrically. So now let's discuss how to do this algebraically. So well, if you are given a vector in 2D, we need to define the vectors using the two points. We need to say, hey, we are given a vector with the starting point at A, with this coordinates, with this ending point at B, with this coordinates. And it's really a little bit like uh, difficult for us to define the vectors in n dimensional case where we would need to define the vectors with the two points. So what we are going to do is we're going to define the vectors always, always with the position vectors. Okay, so what does it mean? So all of, all of our vectors, from now are going to be the position vectors and we will need to define the coordinates of the ending point only. So if you remember the position vector is the vector which starts from the origin, right? So not from the uh, A point, from the origin. So I'm just going to move this vector to the origin. So now if I say by convention that, hey, all of my vectors start from the origin, so all of them have the starting point zero, zero, then I would need to define the vectors by defining the starting point and ending point. So it would be just enough for me to just give an, the coordinates of the ending point. So how to move this vector to the, to the origin? Well, it's easy. So the, uh, so the ending point is going to have the coordinates. So it's like, do you remember that so before it was seven and the two, the starting points, right? So uh, X coordinates of the starting point and the ending point. So now the coordinates of the ending point, when I move this vector to the origin, it is going to be just the subtraction of the two points. 
basically 7 minus 5. Uh, so, so 7 minus t, sorry. And the y coordinate of this point B is going to be a subtraction of the y coordinates of the starting point and the ending point. It was like 8 minus 3, right? So now we can define this vector using two numbers, basically, was the 5 and 5, which are going to be, so sorry, so this is going to be defined as a u is equal to the 5 and 5, which is going to be simply the coordinates of the ending point. Okay, so now we know how to define the vectors just using one point. We don't need two points. So we're going to define the vectors with the coordinates of their ending points in any dimension. So now doing the operations with the vectors algebraically is much more easy than geometrically. So well, if you're given two vectors, for example, in 2D, so it means that they are given with the, uh, like a com two components, U vector is given with the two components, U1 and U2, V vector is given with the components V1 and V2. So if I would like to add these two vectors or subtract these two vectors, I just need to do these operations by element wise. So basically U1, plus minus V1, U2 plus minus V2 is going to be my new resulting vector. Okay, again with the two components. For example, if you're given two vectors, like a five and minus four, the first vector is going to have this components, and the second vector is going to have this components U, V, with the components three and two. So if I would like to add them, I would just add them component wise. So it's going to be three plus five, sorry. It's going to be two minus four, so it's going to have eight and minus two, right? So subtraction is the same. So, oops, so there is a mistake here. It should be eight and minus two. So while it's not so difficult to add and subtract the two vectors algebraically, we just need to add or subtract component wise. So the same as whenever we do the multiplication of a vector to the scalar, to some number, okay? So the scalar, is just a number without direction. So if you are given a vector, if you would like to multiply this vector to the number, what you need to do that is you just need to multiply every component of this vector to this number. So for example, if you're multiplying the vector to the A, then this is the same as multiplying every two component of the vector to this A. For example, if you are given a vector with the components five and minus four, and if you would like to multiply this to the T, you would just multiply this t to every component of your vector. So this is going to be the vector 10 and minus 8. So if you remember this multiplication of t to this vector, just changing the length of this vector without changing its direction. Well, this is the three fundamental operations of the vectors. Addition, subtraction, and the multiplication of a vector to the constant. We've defined this in the three operations and geometrically and algebraically. And we're going to use the three operations throughout the spores in order to construct the like the spaces and the algebra.